So recently Bun 1.0 got released and I started looking into just playing around with Bun, learning more about it. And then also I learned about a web library called Elissa. I believe that's how you pronounce it, which is basically like an express equivalent, but for Bun. So it's supposed to run really fast. And then I went down a path of building out my own server side rendered web framework that also has front end reactivity. But basically what I'm trying to do is I want to build out my own version of like Vue or React without actually using those libraries. I think sometimes reinventing the wheel can be really good for you as a developer because it forces you to understand how things work under the hood. For example, the people who built Vue and Svelte and React, they're obviously very, very smart. And as a consumer of these libraries, we often don't get exposure to how these libraries are built. Why are they the way that they are? And until you start building something for yourself, so I really just want to walk you through the process of this web framework I've been kind of hacking on. So we have the Alyssa Web API, which whenever someone does a request to any of the endpoints, basically I just dynamically import one of these pages here. And then I do a bunch of hacky stuff with the thing that's returned from that page. So notice that we have a to-do route over here. And if I go over to my app, when I hit to-do, it loads up a little basic to-do list application where I can click some things. This is all dynamic on the front end. You can check everything, you can uncheck everything. Um, go ahead and submit something. And so how this works is the handler, you have the ability to create some type of store, which is where you can kind of set up your reactivity with state. Um, right now I have a, an array of to-dos so that when the page first runs from the Elissa and the server side rendering passes through, it's actually gonna send you back some code that has all of the HTML already there, right? So this is the first like server side rendering pass through. I'm gonna disable JavaScript just to show you. So when I refresh the page, there's something weird going on with Tailwind. Like I guess it needs uh, JavaScript, but you can see that all the data is here. So the Elissa app does a initial run through of all your code. And it's going to basically have a search engine optimized page that web crawlers can use on that first load. But the thing that I'm trying to do is after that initial load, can I add in some functionality when people click buttons such as delete or check or uncheck, let me turn back on JavaScript. So if you kind of look at what's going on here, if you look at any of these buttons, you'll see that there's a bunch of on click functionality that's been kind of like hard coded into this. So that when someone clicks on one of these things, it actually can update this store object. And when that store ob object gets updated, it runs a script to basically find everywhere on the page that's listening for that particular thing you updated and it updates that as well. So let me scroll down to the bottom. When your app loads, it basically injects a bunch of hacky scripts down here, where basically when you click set, it kind of updates your local store. So if I go down here and type in store, you'll see there's a global store with all your data. And as I add in new things, that gets updated. But additionally, it searches through the entire application for any DOM element that has data signal ID. And then for every signal ID it finds, it basically loops through them and it recomputes and reruns logic to basically update them, right? So I do have some code set up where if you try to dynamically update an attribute, it'll just update that individual attribute. But I haven't made it too complex yet. So for example, this list attribute, how is it updating this list while well, basically just clears out this entire div? So if I were to go here and expect element, I want to show you that like this is the most robust framework. This is going to basically re-render re every single thing inside of this list as I change things. Okay. So it's not, it's 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 garbage. This whole thing is garbage. But I've been learning a lot about, you know, just web frameworks in general, how to make this thing type safe. Um the way this is working, this isn't even JSX, this is a typed HTML library that I'm using, which does use some JSX behind the this, this scenes. So if I go to my TS config, you'll see that I do have some JSX set up, but instead of using like react, I'm using elements.createElement. So that allows me to write like HTML and get like nice IntelliSense. Like right here, I get all of my attributes already auto-filled and I get the nice syntax highlighting, um, but I can't use like typical react stuff. Like there's no on click camel case. It's just on submit. Um, there's on click. Now, in order to get this to work with reactivity, I actually have to pass in, which basically takes a function, it converts it to a string, and then it embeds it inside of the thing that you're trying to do, right? So for example, this event function I'm doing takes in this function, stringifies it, and puts it right here. Um, at some point, I might actually have those be externalized and put them in scripts, because right now, if I add like a debugger here, it's just awful. 
Okay, like you can't really debug this code because the script is inlined. So I'm gonna probably work on refactoring those out and get them pulled out somewhere else. So that's kind of how that's working with like doing dynamic click events. For example, here's the button here that says on click, I wrap an event here, and then I'm updating the list of to-dos by basically just setting them all to checked. Or over here, I'm setting them all to unchecked. So the store kind of has like a React feel to it where in order to update something, you basically have to pass it a callback. But then for binding, um, again, this is kind of like a, I guess a solid JS kind of approach maybe. I don't know, this is just a hacky framework I'm building, but it's fun. Over here, total items. If you want to have this recompute as things are changing, you basically just put this git here. And I'm just doing a git to do's and then I'm passing a callback, computing the length here. So that's how the total items and total checked is able to update. Again, as I click on this thing, it's kicking off a function which does a query selector to find every single thing on the page that has a particular signal ID. And then it goes ahead and just recomputes that and updates the DOM. So this, this project's been kind of stressing my knowledge with TypeScript because like this whole store thing I'm doing, it's all type safe. Like when I do these double quotes, I can see everything that I'm putting in the store up here. So if I were to add more things like name is Bob, you'll see that that thing will pop up in the store as well. I'll just go ahead and do this. And if I wanted to display that somewhere, I could say it, and then I could say name. Okay, and now that name will be displayed up here in the top left. But then if I want to add a new way to change that, I could say button on click. I could say event. Go ahead and say set name to hello, something like that. And I got a button that says set. If I click it, Notice that Bob gets updated to hello. Now, again, this is all running in the front end. This is all just JavaScript updating the DOM. There's no backend stuff going. So the, the first page does a server-side rendering, and then everything else, the JavaScript starts running, and you have like this, this interactivity that's kind of set up. So now I want to kind of talk about, like, how did I get to this, this part? Because I didn't just off the bat start coding out a framework that kind of works like this. Um, I had to write a bunch of random hacky code with basically setting up a store where you can set and get entries. Um, when you use a store, it kind of injects a bunch of stuff into your front end code like this. I also have live reload set up. I was on the Alyssa Discord talking to someone and we managed to get some live reloading going. So like if I were to go ahead and put some exclamation marks and click save, notice that this automatically just live reloads and sets that up. So like I have a with live reload script, if you're not running in prod mode, it injects a bunch of like WebSocket connections. And then we have a live reload WebSocket server that's running on this port, where basically anytime the Alyssa app restarts, it signals or sends a message to this live reload server and this live reload server sends a message to all web clients telling them to just reload the page. So we got that set up. It's pretty cool. Um, I got this little hacky thing to inject Tailwind from a CDN directly into my code base. This obviously isn't the best approach. You should be using post CSS to kind of prune down your Tailwind instead of just in including every single style. But again, I'm just trying to get something that works and then I'll go back and uh, clean it up. So in the Elisa web server, like I said, when that handler runs, it just returns you some HTML. And then we have a bunch of like wrappers that basically look through it and do some crazy stuff to the HTML. So for these signal things, what I'm doing is I'm looking through the code for anywhere that we did a git call and behind the scenes on the server, when the git call runs, it basically replaces a string with this like signal string. And then I look through the string and I find everywhere that signal is set up. I do a regex and I replace all the DOM elements that have this, this data attribute, right? So if we were to hover over anything here, let's just go to list. And I were to go ahead and click on this list, you'll see that there's a data signal ID here, which has a list, it has a data, and it has a zero. So what this is saying is look at the store and find the attribute data. And anytime attribute data changes, go ahead and update this list as I call the set method, right? So when I click on click me, set's gonna get called, it updates that store. The store method is gonna look through the DOM and find the thing that you're trying to update and it just updates it. So if I have like a bunch of different elements on the page that are all bound to this key of data changing, it'll just recompute it and print it out. And then I got a bunch of other hacky stuff that basically uses that same approach. All right, I'll admit this video is kind of all over the place. I just wanted to share what I'm building with you and also just hit on the fact that sometimes you want to dive into the weeds and learn how to build out a library or framework for yourself. Because doing so will stress your underlying knowledge of like JavaScript and TypeScript and how like all this stuff kind of works. Um, for example, like I had to learn a lot about TypeScript generics and like how to properly extend things and set up these types 
so that I get all that type safety when I'm writing out my templates over here using these get and set keywords. Because without learning how to do that stuff, like you just won't get the type safety. Like right here, I get like type safety when I do a set on a store. So those are some things that I kind of had to, um, and I don't think I would have solidified that knowledge unless I actually tried to build out this little hacky framework myself. Take time, try to reinvent the wheel, really stress your knowledge and see how much more you'll actually learn because you'll be surprised. There's a lot of stuff you'll learn if you try to build out your own React framework or your own view or Svelte. Um, yeah, well, stay tuned. If you guys want to see more updates on this, be sure to subscribe, comment, press the bell icon. And like always, I got a Discord channel. You're welcome to join if you want to find a place to hang out with some other developers and ask some questions. All right, have a good day and happy coding.